difference is less than 2-4, adding and subtracting decimals. Your learning goal tonight is to add and subtract decimals to hundreds and explain the reasoning used. I want you to take a minute and write that learning goal into your journal. So one more time, the learning goal is to add and subtract decimals to hundreds and explain the reasoning used. Write that down, pause the video when you're finished, start the video again. Alright, vocabulary for this evening. Your vocabulary is, now that there are four of them, so it's going to take a minute to write them, but please make sure you take the time to write all four of them down. It's going to be essential as we move through all of your units to know all of your vocabulary words. So your first one is sum. Sum is the answer to an addition problem. Your second vocabulary word is difference, which is the answer to a subtraction problem. Your third vocabulary term tonight is the commutative property of addition, which simply means that two numbers can be added in any order. So that means that 4 plus 6 equals 6 plus 4. The answer is going to be the same regardless of the order of the numbers. And your final vocabulary term for tonight is the associative property of addition, which means that when three or more numbers are added together, the sum is the same regardless of the grouping. And the example that I have down for tonight is that 4 plus 2 plus 3 is the same as 4 plus 2 plus 3. It's exactly the same. The answer is going to come out the same. Alright, I hope you wrote those down. Let's continue. So adding and subtracting decimals. Sometimes it's easy to think of decimals if you can look at a hundreds chart. So if you look at these two hundreds charts, this simply shows that each of these squares represents one. So one little square is one hundredth of this whole square. So all of this shaded in equals one whole. So that's one hundred hundredths. If you look at this side, again, each square represents 0 0.01 or one hundredth. So the part of this that is shaded, if you count every single one, is 55 hundredths. Now instead of having to count every single one, each of these rows equals 10. It's a 10 by 10 grid, so there are 10 down, there are 10 across. So you can count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, then you have 5 here, so it's 55 hundredths. Because 55 out of 100, so you can think of it this way, 55 out of 100 are shaded in. That is the same as 55 hundredths. Alright, let's look at these. Let's think about adding decimals this way. Again, it's just easier to think of it on the hundredths chart. On this hundredths chart, 30 are shaded in. So 30 out of 100, so it's 30 hundredths. This is the same as 3 tenths because 3 columns of 10 are shaded in. So it's 3 tenths or 30 hundredths. Added to, over here, you have 50 hundredths, which means 50 of those are shaded in. Or you have 5 rows of 10, which is 5 tenths. So here you have 30 hundredths plus 50 hundredths. If you add those together, if you shade in the both of those on hundredths chart, it equals 80 hundredths. This line was drawn in the wrong spot. So if you think of this, 50 plus 30 equals 80 hundredths. All we have done here is to combine all of the 30 plus the 50, and over here 80 of those are shaded in. So you count all of the squares to find the sum of the two numbers. Write the numbers as decimals, line up your decimal points, and add your numbers. Alright, subtraction is really the same way. So if you think of subtraction, it's the same thing. On this first grid, there are 61 out of the 100 that are shaded in. So it's 61 hundredths. On this grid, there are 25 hundredths that are shaded in. In the green, all of it all together, if you can tell, is the same as the 61. I'm trying to show you that if we take 25 away, from the 61 that are al already shaded in. That's why I'm showing you the subtraction on there. So if you notice the green plus the purple, it's the same as the 61 here. 
So the ones with the X's are the 25 that were taken away. When you subtract that, over here you have the blue that's left, which is the same as this purple shaded here. So 6,100 minus 2,500 equals 3,600. Line up your decimal points and you can do your subtraction problem. Let's look at this on here. So over here we have 61. So over here we've got 61 minus, and in the light green we have 2,500. You have to make sure that you line up your decimal points before you can subtract or add. You can never add or subtract decimals unless you line up your decimal points. So you have 6,100 minus 2,500. Line up your decimal points, then line up your numbers. So now you can subtract. You cannot subtract 5 from 1, so we're going to borrow. The 6 becomes a 5. We're going to add that that we borrowed. We borrowed 10, so your 1 doesn't just, be, it's not a 1 anymore, it's an 11. So 11 minus 5 is 6. 5 minus 2 is 3. Make sure you bring your decimal point down. And then if you look back up here, we have three rows of 10 and then six individuals. So we have 3,600. All right, adding and subtracting practice. Let's look at this adding and subtracting practice. The very first one, this is what I want you to write in your journal tonight. We have 1 in 2,300 plus 3,400. I want you to write that down in your journal, write your answer down, and then continue the video. All right, did you get one in five, one in 5,600? Let's do that together and let's look at this. So, you have one and 2,200. Line up your decimal points. Always line those decimal points up, then your numbers will follow in the right order. Then you have 3,400. When you add those up, I don't know, I really don't know why this keeps erasing on me. Two plus four is six. 2 plus 3 is 5. Please don't forget to bring down your decimal point. And 1 plus nothing is 1. So you should have gotten 1 in 5,600. All right, look at your next one. 6,300 plus 4,100. Add those together. Write your answer down in your journal. And then continue the video when you're ready. All right, did you get 1 and 400? Let's look at this together. All right, make sure you first line those up. So you have 6,300, line up your decimal points, plus 4,100. Then you line those up. 3 plus 1 is 4. This is where it gets tricky. You have 6 plus 4 is 10. You have to put your 0 here. When you carry your 1, it carries to the other side of the decimal point. You have to bring your decimal point down, and then you bring your 1 down. So you can't add anything on this side of the decimal point anymore. You have to make sure you bring it over to the whole number side. So you should have gotten 1 and 400. All right, your next problem should be in your journal. 2 and 7,300 minus 9,400. Write that down in your journal and do it, and when you're ready, continue the video again. All right. Did you get 1 in 7,900? Let's do it together and let's see how we did. So, first thing you want to do is you want to write your number down. 2 and 7,300. This is subtraction. Line up your decimal points. It's essential. Minus 9,400. We have to borrow because 4 can't subtract from 3. So your 7 becomes a 6. Your 3 becomes 13. 4 from 3 is not from 13 is 9. You cannot subtract 9 from 6. Again, you must borrow. That becomes a 1. So let's do this one. And this 6 becomes 16. So 13 minus 4 is 9. 16 minus 9 is 7. Don't forget your decimal point. And 1 minus nothing is 1. And you should have gotten 1 and 7,900. Good job. Make sure all of those are written in your journal for tomorrow. All right, your challenge problem for tonight. You've received your weekly allowance of $12.
you want to spend it all right away because that's what my kids always do. Every time we get money, they want to spend it right away. Use the chart below to determine what you can purchase. Don't forget tax. Your tax is 7% of your total purchase. So, what did you decide to buy? How much did you spend? And what is your change? So you're going to have a little bit to do on this challenge problem. And I don't normally help you, but I'm going to give you a little hint here. So, you can purchase whatever you want. You only have $12 to spend. You can buy whatever you want, but you have to save room at the end to figure out 7%. And to figure out 7%, add up what it is you want to buy, then you have to multiply by 7%. Add that 7% to your total to make sure that you have enough. It has to be less, all of it all together has to be less than $12 in order to have enough to spend. Everybody's going to be getting different answers on this. So we have a few written down on the challenge answer and the rest you can check with your teacher if it doesn't happen to be on the list. So, happy shopping, and I will see your answer tomorrow. All right, finishing up. Look at your learning goal one more time. Make sure it's written into your journal. Also, please make sure your vocabulary is written in there, all four of them. Make sure your problems are written in there and the answer to your challenge problem. And you have finished lesson 2.4. Bring all of that with you to class tomorrow, and get a good night's rest, and I will see you in the morning. Good night.